Well, yeah, I thought I'd take a couple of minutes and show you something I was playing with here. It's an old chainsaw that I've got. Um, I bought this back in 1981. I've had it for 30 plus years now. It kind of gave up the ghost here a couple of years ago, so sentimental reasons I didn't want to throw it away. Wanted to make some good use out of it, so this is what I ended up with so far. It's, again, it's just prototype. It's something I want to run off of steam. Um, I pretty much stripped it down. As you can see, there's no handle on it. Uh, the pull start would normally be over here. The carburetor would be here. Spark plug would be coming up out of the top of the cylinder here. Uh, the, the bar and chain typically would be set up off of here. And uh, what I've done is attach a blowgun, simple hardware type blowgun, uh, rigged up a, a fiberglass. Uh, this is a windshield tool actually for taking out windshields, something I've done in the past. Set it up with the trigger, set up a little, this, this little flywheel here uh, takes the place of a distributor in a car where I can, uh, I can adjust and, and alter when air is applied to the cylinder as combustion would be in a normal, normally running engine. And uh, what this lobe here does, it, I've set it up here just a few degrees before top dead center. And you can determine top dead center by just sticking a, a, a screwdriver in this hole here and turning the crank uh, to bring the piston up to top dead center. So you can set that up that way. And what this lobe here does, this simple aluminum lobe that I set up, uh, it'll trigger the air to come in at top dead center, leave the air on for this duration, and then shut it off. And what that'll do is it'll apply air when the piston is almost up to the top of the cylinder. When the, when the space is the least, apply air to push the piston back down and uh, by way of its own momentum, it will want to come back up. The air will be applied, it will push it down and there you have uh, effectively combustion, which it is. This is compressed air. Like I say, I want to run it on steam. So that's the concept. Um, if you leave the air on continually, you can get a reciprocal action. I'll show you this in a minute when I'm running it, but I just wanted to explain it just for a brief moment. Uh, if you leave the air on continually, it'll, be, it'll constantly apply air to the piston, so it'll almost come up and it'll be pushed down, um, come up again and be pushed down and, and work in this, this kind of a fashion here. If a reciprocal action is something you might be looking for. me. I kind of am thinking that I want to put a hydraulic pump on the other side of this, uh, the flywheel side of this, so that I can run uh, hydraulics, which in turn uh, could run a, a small generator or, or anything mechanical that requires motion. Uh, for instance, like an entire skid steer, an entire tractor is run on hydraulics uh, from the wheels to, to all the implements, and, and that whole principle can be can be downsized to something like this and then brought back up depending on what the capacity of the engine is. So anyway, that's kind of it in a real quick nutshell. This is how it's going to operate in this kind of a fashion here. And uh, uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, this is where the carburetor would normally go. And for the sake of lubrication, because if I was running this on steam, um, it would tend to be a little bit corrosive. Uh, this is a two-stroke engine with lenses, which lends itself to this kind of application. Uh, it would need some kind of a lubrication. And what I was thinking was a drip oiler on the intake side, so where just a small, just a small portion of uh, oil would, lubricant would be added to the crankshaft in the lower, lower half of the engine, uh, just to keep things rolling on the intake cycle of this uh, stroke here. So, I know this uh, might be all a little bit vague to some and, and not so vague to others. But, uh, let me hook some air to it and you can see just how, how it's going to work. It's not self-starting. You have to initiate it and, and this is how I do it. Something like that.
So there's a 30 year old chainsaw that's not good for anything else. I was able to rebuild it and just uh, use uh, emery cloth, similar to this here, uh, to clean up the piston, the cylinder walls and the piston and free up the ring so that I could actually get this much action out of it. Uh, but that's how, that's how it goes. You can adjust the air pressure, which I'll do right now. This uh, in its day, this chainsaw was the top of the line. It's about a three horse chainsaw, three horsepower. It's it's, it's you know at full throttle. And uh, I've yet to see if I can really put it to good use, but it's a conceptual thing, and this is certainly a prototype. Um, I'll show you how some reciprocal, so how how it can work on reciprocal fashion here in a second. So it's got a variety, it's got potential. I still have to develop it, but uh, that's kind of what I've been playing with down here on the bench, among other things. And it's something that I just keep toying with as time goes on. And we'll tweak it out. I should have a shutoff valve here, so I have to keep messing with that. Maybe a pressure gauge so I can monitor the pressure a little bit better. So far now I'm running it as low as about 35 pounds. And as high as whatever I want. Chainsaw, as you know, anybody that knows a chainsaw, it can rev quite high. And uh, I, th I think it's got potential to power something if I could provide a steam source and, and bring it all together. But um, I just couldn't give up on a 30 year old saw that I've been using for a long, long time. And uh, that's what I ended up with. There you go. <laughs>